pays for that. My idea is to use the petroleum bounty that Alberta has been given in a model of stewardship and sustainability and use the money from that to build and pay for those new and emerging technologies. Almost all of those technologies are at the lab stage or the demonstration stage. We are very, very close to having viable solar, viable wind, of being able to take smokestack emissions and have them digested, the carbon dioxide digested by algae to produce everything from food supplements to new products to other sources of fuel. But that is going to take tens of billions of dollars of investment. And I suggest that as a Gandhian gesture, we should use our oil wealth in Alberta to provide those tens of billions and to share that bounty with the world at no or low cost. That is something that I have been throwing out as a citizen challenge for the past three or four months. It's implicit in a book I wrote recently called Green Oil, Clean Energy for the 21st Century. But I need citizens to speak. I need people to be empowered with knowledge which the book gives. I want people to think carefully about what a Gandhian sense of stewardship for our planet should mean, and then to instruct the government, who are simply our elected managers, and to instruct the energy companies, which are simply tenants on our public land, that this is the way we want to develop our society. And why should we fulfill this global duty? Again, I come back to the contrast between cultures of violence and the potential and possibility of a culture of peace. I would never be smug or arrogant enough to say that we have achieved a culture of peace in Canada. But I can assert that we can have more capacity to strive toward a culture of peace than other countries do, not simply because of our wealth, but because of our ability to absorb and integrate many different streams of the human experience into a compelling mainstream that shows the rainbow of human sources, human origins, and gives us a foundation and a basis to overcome otherness, to find the positives of faith, to find the goodness that it has, they have got it now than as they were you know, almost uh, 70, 80 years ago. Um, we are requesting Mark Aran to please come forward and introduce our next speaker. And it's a very short uh, biography, and I think it says a lot about, about who Piat is. He says, I am married and I have the true joy of being the father of two children. I have two brothers and one sister. They live in Quebec in New Brunswick. I grew up with my parents on the shores of the St. Lawrence River. Since I was a very young child, I've been surrounded by salt water, waves, sunsets, snow, ice, storms, and even whales. My ancestors came to Canada as early as 1615 with Samuel de Champlain. I grew up in a French Catholic family, and I hope to convey my cultural heritage to my own children. After my secondary education, I completed a degree at the Collège de Rimouski in Humanities and Psychology. Then I moved to Montreal to study at the University de Québec à Montréal, where I graduated with my bachelor's degree in physical education. A few years later, I completed a master's degree in education at the University of Alberta, and Piat is very close to completing a PhD at the University of Alberta in educational policy. So, without any further introduction, I'd invite my friend and colleague Pierre Rousseau to come and speak to you, please. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I forgot about this. And my first goal today would be, first of all, not to bring shame to Dean Arnal, because he invited me today, and I'm honored to be here. And if one of you would like to pick the computer, there's a little file called uh, Paulo Freire. If you try to open it, I think it's going to work. If not, it's fine. I'm honored to be here. And, and I will talk about Paulo Freire, but I want to say a few things before that. You know, a few, well, 1992, when uh, Father Thomas Villadeau retired from the faculty, I was offered to teach religious studies at the faculty, so I became a sessional while teaching at school. And I really enjoyed this time given to me to read about religion, 
to teach the students at the faculty. And, and all of this time to really enjoy being with students who somehow would become teachers. And that's important. I am amazed by what Satya just said. In fact, I'm going to invite him to the school after this. And, uh, but I think that if I try humbly to go one step further is then to say, what do we do? What do we tell our children? What do we do with all of this, this amazing goal of love? Now back to Dr. Arnaud, in 2005 he offered me to go full-time at the faculty, and I did. It's true to say that I almost tried not to have a classroom that year. But Mark also convinced me to teach Eastern religion. And I recall saying no several times, saying I would be an imposter to do so because I don't know it well. And he really pushed forward, and I finally agreed to do so. And during the summer, reading about Hinduism, about Gandhi, about Buddhism, Confucianism, I thought, well, I know all of this. I read most of it in most of the Christian and Muslim and Jewish writers, theologians. We're all so close together. And again, this has to the honor I have to be here today. Now back to the conference. My students could tell me I can speak for a very long time, so please, Mark, wave to me if I go after 15 minutes. This picture was done by one of my students, by the way, Karl Kuziak. He uh, drew Paulo Freire when we had a conference here. And I want to say a few things about this because I think that this is very close to what Satya just discussed here. So if you go to the next slide, I think if you just right click somewhere, yes. Very quickly, uh, for the last three years in the spring, we had this conference at the school. And this is a youth conference. 